Hello and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. My guest today is a producer, actress, writer, and an amazing woman, Tony Hudson. Welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you for having me, Gary. Hi. It's so, uh, so great to have you. You know, um, you have a new movie that's coming out, which we'll talk about, but talking about acting and career wise, I know you grew up in San Bernardino and what was it that, let's say, inspired you to become an actress? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> my family would say that I'm an emotional wreck. <laughs> I call myself emotionally available. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I come from a dancing family. So my grandmother had a dance studio where she taught little girls how to dance. And my mother was a only child slash Shirley Temple type. So tap dancing and performing was very big in my house from the age of four on. So I was always in class dancing and singing. And then um, I think as I just got a little older, I did Teen Magazine. I called them up. My mother, I told them, I was looking at Teen Magazine from the grocery store. And I said, Mom, I want to be in this magazine. She said, well, call them up and tell them. <laughs> so I did. And they called me in. And I went in and I was in the Christmas issue. Oh, uh, gosh. How old was I? I want to say I was 15. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, I got into Teen Magazine and then it just slowly went into commercials and it just seemed like a natural progression for me from tap dancing and singing and being in chorus and drill team and cheerleading. And, and, and then I know your first audition or actually the first uh, job was after the commercials was a soap opera called Capital. Yeah, Capital was a short-lived uh, soap opera along with you know, Young and the Restless and General Hospital, which I was on both of those as well. But Capital was my very first uh, job on a soap and it was a day player job. I think it was a day play, could have been two days. Yeah, no, one day, it was one day. And I play a girl who comes into the bus station in town with her suitcase all by herself and she gets trafficked, <laughs> so. Wow. Um, I end up in the hospital and I remind when Laura, Luke and Laura were missing on General Hospital, I played in that one too. Yes. And then you went on to, I mean, you were working nonstop, I remember, uh, just one of the guys, Places in the Heart. I mean, it was just nonstop. What was the, I mean, you, you actually had this inspiration, but what what was keeping you going? Was it the art of acting or was it was it just physically, you know, doing this kind of emotional work that you were doing, that you were being paid for? What was it? It just, it just seemed like the logical thing for me to do. I don't know why acting just fell so into place, except for it was a way for me to express myself in a way that um, really fully was like therapy, because I had therapy early on in my life as a young teenager. So I think the idea of taking on characters and being able to live out different people without having to really be those people and take the responsibility for the things they might be doing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of cathartic and very therapeutic to, to have all those outlets. It's kind of like going into a sauna and letting it all come out your pores. I, I think that's what acting is like for me. But yeah, uh, now creating characters. And then of course, being observant of the human condition always fascinated me. So I write poems and songs, and now I've written books and uh, plays and movies. So yeah, it, it's, it's the human condition and illuminating what that's about so that we can maybe understand each other more and then have fun doing it. And <laughs> that's I think what I love that's acting. what's so interesting is people have to learn how to understand, but how to, how to communicate. And I think the world is sometimes so caught up in ego and success, but they really lose touch with oneness and just love. I think that's so important that we have to not forget. Well, I think that's the whole idea of becoming an actor and taking on that job of, of someone's story, because we all have a story that's very important. It's our story. And so we're all striving to be recognized, acknowledged, respected, and loved. And so if we're not feeling like we're getting it at home, we go into the cinema, the theater, or at home with our surround sound, and we watch other people have those experiences, but we can 
the body doesn't know whether it's pretend, right, or real. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're imagining, your body can experience. And um, yeah, it's a great thing to be able to to to, to share that idea. And the and the movie I'm writing actually is a very uplifting movie, not a dark, uh, heavy movie. And and I know that you know at a young age you were into wellness, but you became sort of a health advocate in your book, which is Correct Living, or your brand. What What is Correct Living? Correct Living is uh, something that I call the way I adopted my lifestyle over 40 years ago, which is basically based on the ancient Eastern philosophy and teachings of the macrobiotic philosophy, which most folks would turn to in desperation in reference to they're at death's door and they don't want to go the traditional route. So they try, okay, I'll try food. And that's usually what the macrobiotic thing is known for. And then I just tried it to make it more commercial. I have children, I had three boys and I had to feed them food that they took to school and their friends would come over for play dates. How do I do that? So I kind of blended the whole idea of what the philosophies are and made some fun, interesting food. So Correct Living, the brand is basically um, just setting things right and straight in reference to what we need to do. And it's, it's an Eastern philosophy, not a Western Occidental thinking. Yeah. Hmm. What, what do you think is the issue with people of finding themselves not being happy? What, what, is the, what, is that, what is that core belief why people are not happy? I think, and I can only go from my own experience because I don't know what other people's experience are, but from my experience, I wish I would have known, been taught, showed, experienced, whatever words you want to choose there, <clears throat> what it is to be happy individually first. Because I think we grow up with all the stimuli, right? The TV, the ads, the computer, the phone, the everything. And, and there's, they're telling us how to act and how to be and how we should to be looking hip and cool. And instead of getting comfortable in our own skin first, we're trying to get all this outside things, whether it's people and, and, and things to make us feel happy. And it's not anybody's fault. It's kind of the way it's worked for a while in reference to how it's presented. But uh, I've gone deeper than that now <laughs> as a grown woman who just turned 60, by the way. Mm. <clears throat> and I feel really good about that. But understanding that, that, being happy first, no matter where you are, no matter what the situation, no matter who's in your life, who's not in your life, being happy now, not saying not having dreams or visions of the future or desires or aspirations, but being able to be happy now. Exactly. Be here now. Say yes. And, and it's yes interesting because most people, most people, Tony, are looking outside themselves for happiness. And I think that is a big uh, mistake because it's setting yourself up for failure. And you're looking externally that if I have more money, I'll be happy. If I have a, a hit TV show or a movie, I'll be happy. If I have a hit book, I'll be happy. If I have a brand new car, I'll be happy. So exactly. at the end of the day, you're looking at, let's say, projecting outside yourself instead of saying, you know what, I'm happy just to be happy in this, in this experience. And I think that's what's so needed, no matter what job you're doing, is really knowing that the happiness starts within first, and then everything is icing on the cake. Yeah, to piggyback that, absolutely, 100%. To piggyback that is, <clears throat> once you're happy, then you're vibrating at a level that allows more, more happy to come in. It's kind of like once you're committed to something, once you're 100% committed to something, all unforeseen acts of aids and assistance will align and fall into your path to help you. So if you're a results-oriented person, you're saying, okay, when I see the job, I'll be happy. When I see the paycheck, I'll be happy. Then you'll be waiting all the time because really the idea of life daily is to aspire to something whether it's to finish cooking the meal for the family or it's to aspire to do a good job at work or to be a really good friend or to finish that paper at school we're all aspiring to do something we're never not doing something so if we're 
already happy, then what we're aspiring to is just icing on the cake. And because you're vibrating at a level where you know what you want is there and you're happy now, I think you, we, we pull it in, we draw it in. And I, and I think that's the key. Yep. Over the years, you've worked with some amazing directors and producers. Who would be some of the ones that really stand out uh, just in uh, names? Gary Marshall, hmm. uh, surrogate father type. Once I met him and worked on his first film that he directed, which was Young Doctors in Love. It was my first film as an actress. It was his first film as a director. I was originally hired for three days and I worked for 13 weeks. So we were kind of in the trenches together. My first film, his first film was a director. Um, we just hit it off and yes, he became like a surrogate dad and ended up giving me away when I got married. Um, Walter Miller, Walter C. Miller, bless his heart, rest in peace. He just passed. Gary Marshall has also passed. Uh, but Walter Miller just passed at the age of 94 and he for 30, 35 years directed and produced the Grammys, the CMAs, Country Music Awards in Nashville. So many live, live, live television shows. He was a genius at it and I got to learn from him I was hired by him and I and I uh yeah so he's another one that really influenced my life but then you have Robert Benton he did Kramer versus Kramer but he also did Places in the Heart which I was involved with Sally Field won an Academy Award for that movie uh where she got her Oscar You Love Me and we're all we all know about that one but that Sally Field oh my gosh I love that woman uh she's also another Scorpio um so yes, who else have I worked with? So there, there, there's the, those are the the creme de la creme. Yeah, um, and 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 what has been one of the greatest challenges that you have overcome? <clears throat> I think the fluctuation as an actor, or just in life in, in general, in, in because life, I can in life in general. I think our past our past crutches, weights that we tie around our ankles, uh, backpacks full of pain we carry around our hearts of our past and learning to shed that, to let, to let ourselves know that the past is the past and to learn from it. It, it builds part of who we are. So to embrace it, don't, don't, get rid of it, shed it, and act like it wasn't there because it was there. Whatever that past was, it was there. And it makes up who we are. I have a line in one of my songs is, of all the lessons life has taught me, where you're from is who you are. But each day and each moment going forward, we can choose how we want to be. So to learn from the past, but don't let the past be the excuse and the reason to not get to where you want to go to in the future. Hmm. Who inspires Tony musically? You know, gutturally, I like I like blues and jazz and uh, anything that has that bass beat. Certain disco, you know, that thumping, uh -huh. boom, 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 <laughs> that thumping bass beat. Anything that gets me moving and wants, wanting to dance is uh, some of my most influence. But Dwight Yoakam, obviously, I've worked with him. He's a dear friend, and uh, his raw, uh, unadulterated, perfect pitch thing he's got going on is amazing. I've choreographed many of his videos, been in a few, and choreographed his country music uh, awards a, a performance one year. And uh, no, he's he's been amazing. Michael Bolton, a dear friend, but oh my gosh, what, what an, a magnificent, uh, uh, his whole thing that he's built. It's like it's a fine oiled machine. And I got to see him in action. And uh, that man is something, let me tell you. So uh, influence, not just their music, but who they are as people turned me on to philosophy and ideas of life. They're dear friends. Um, and then of course, all the basics, you know, I love the standards and the Nat King Coles and Patsy Cline and Linda Ronstadt. I mean, I have a lot of musical influences, mm -hmm. but yeah. And I know you um, are now a producer and you put together this Christmas film, uh, which is Charlie's Christmas Witch, well, not wished, wish, Charlie's <laughs> Christmas Wish. Um, 
What yeah, was look, that? I have the same one right oh, yeah, here. You have, you, have the, you have the box copy. Uh, we have the matching. I love it. And and to, to talk to me about that. How did that all come about? And that is your real little dog, right? Yes, that's my dog. Uh, that's actually how it came about in reference to the idea of making a Christmas family dog homeless veteran themed movie. But my producing partner, Sue Ann Taylor, and I were at the American Film Market in Santa Monica together. I was still living in L.A. at the time. And she had come on out and we had four films that we were pitching at the market. And one of them we lost. It was pulled out from underneath us right in the middle of the market. So we had this slot opening and we were a little irritated, of course, that we lost what we lost. But... Uh, while we were walking around making the rounds, we kept hearing, hey, do you have a Christmas family dog movie? Do you have a dog Christmas family movie? <laughs> you know, they get that. So Sue Ann's laying on the, the bed, at my the pullout bed in my house. And she wakes up in the morning and Charlie's there licking her face and saying hello. She looks at Charlie and she goes, Charlie, do you want to make a Christmas dog family movie? And I got up and she told me her idea. And then we just started vamping and building. And then we'll get my son to be the son. And we'll get my ex-husband to play the guy. And we'll do this. And we'll get my girlfriend, Lindsay. And we'll, and we'll just do, 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 do And we were just start building the cast and the story. And she had the locations. And we just made a decision. And we ended up writing this movie, producing this movie, uh, casting it. I did the set design. I trained my dog even more than she was already trained naturally and made it work and then had to recast the lead actor because we lost who the lead actor was. We had to recast and reshoot. And there was a lot of challenges, but it was our first movie and we got it done in Lionsgate uh, distributing it. It's out right now on iTunes, Prime Video. You can go, I think Netflix even has it, I think. But anyway, you can go anywhere, Charlie's Christmas Wish and um, order it. But yeah, leave a review. Make sure you let us know that you like it. Yes. So what is next on the future projects for Tony? Well, um, I have uh, my own movie, Living on the Fringe, that I've written, which is part of my, it's inspired by my true story, but it's uh, a homeless woman, about 55 years old, who runs into another homeless person who's 38, and he's kind of cute and handsome, and they fall for each other for a moment and affect each other's life, and, um, and they change each other. So it's a, a film of hope. Um, it's when you're stuck on the outside looking in. And uh, yeah, living on the fringe. So, uh, and then I have uh, something very, um, the lead character invents something in the movie and that is also part of it. So that it's product driven, there'll be marketing and it has to do with dancing and exercise. So yeah, it's, it's pretty big. I'm a big thinker, I'm a big project, but also my book, my audio book, How I Found Myself with Correct Living is also out on audiobooks.com and Audible and all that. So I narrate, personally narrate my book. So it's just like me talking and I'm sharing with you my journey of food and health and all that from, from the moment I learned about it until now. So that's also come out. That's a, that's a big project. And attached to that, which is still developing, is the TV show Correct Living, which is cooking and just how to live, whether it's correct baby, correct home, correct kid, um, you know, correct decorating, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's a brand and we're building it and I'm very excited about that. But movies and TV, I have a television show called um, The Stand-In, which is every day I stand in the spotlight, a spotlight meant for someone else. And that's, that's an amazing little TV series that I'm writing based on um, a job I did for 20, 30 years. Wow, excellent, Tony. Well, I wanna thank you for spending this time with me and you are an inspiration and you are perpetual motion and I just admire your tenacity. And remember, we just never give up. Um, no, we never do. But you've been such a big part of my whole journey, Gary. So those of you that don't know, Gary and I have known each other a long time. And uh, everything that he is offering now is what he's been living and doing for so long. And now he's just putting it out there for everybody else to enjoy. Those of us that have known him a long time got to enjoy it along the way. But so thank you for having me, Gary. I'm really excited to be on. And it's so great because I'm literally down the street from where we met at Joe Tremaine's. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I met so many people there. 
Uh, but it was uh, synchronicity that was in the eighties. Uh, oh yeah. And, and, uh, and, um, and, and the, and dance is such a part of my life and that was at the dance class. So yes, that's how wow. it went. Well, when you come back to LA, we'll celebrate your birthday at the sun cafe and we'll dance. Yes. Cause I'm moving back. <laughs> that's right. Like, in two weeks. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, have a great holiday, safe travels, and I'll see you when you're back in LA. Thank you for joining me. And you can go on Tony's uh, Instagram. It's in uh, Tony Hudson uh, nine, or you can go to her website, correctliving.com and join us for another episode of Ready, Set, Live. I'm Gary Quinn. Until next time, peace out.